With the expansion of solar energy across India, there are a lot of talks on new jobs being created by the thriving solar industry in India. In our latest episode, we talked to Arpit Sharma of Skill Council for Green Jobs to understand the matter in detail. This is Manish Kumar and you are watching The Conversations with Solar Energy International. established in 2015 it was set up by the ministry of skill development and entrepreneurship and it is being supported by the ministry of new and renewable energy the primary objective of setting up the sector skill council for green jobs was to identify the skill needs in various sectors uh, like renewable energy environment forest and climate change and uh, sustainable development so the first mandate is to identify what are the skill gaps what are the kind of job roles that exist in these particular sectors, do an occupational mapping, and then uh, formulate relevant curriculum which can be uh, taught during the training programs. So, for example, in renewable energy, our main focus right now uh, is solar PV and wind, considering that India has an ambitious target of uh, being net zero by 2070, uh, to add a capacity addition of 500, of gig, 500 gigawatts of renewable energy sources to meet half of the energy requirements from non-fossil fuels and renewable energy sources by 2030 and to uh, reduce its uh, carbon emissions by 1 billion tons by 2030. So considering all of these aspects, uh, we see that there is a huge requirement of skilled manpower and now that, you know, as we are in this conference on solar PV manufacturing, we are also seeing that there's a huge push on solar domestic manufacturing. Uh, we, uh, our process uh, is uh, after doing the skill gap and do the, doing the occupational mapping, we identify suitable training institutions uh, who are able to impart the training in various domains, uh, like in solar PV, in wind, in wind energy, in waste management, in green hydrogen, and after affiliating these training institutions, and the, once the training is being completed, the assessment and certification of candidate is being carried out by Skill Council for Green Jobs and paneled assessment agencies. Currently, we are working with a strength of more than 500 training partners across India, which includes National Institute of Solar Energy, uh, IIT, IIT Bandi, we have Tamil Nadu Agricultural University, RV College of Engineering, and some, some really uh, prestigious names in our uh, training partners list. So we also see that, uh, you know, the, sometimes the, the skilling is not uh, delivered as per the requirements of the industry because there is a mismatch, there is a gap between what the industry requires and what actually uh, is being trained in the classroom or during the OJT. Uh, this is one of the challenges that we face. Because, the, because of this ambitious target, we see that uh, during, uh, in one of the reports, we mentioned that you know, there'll be more than a million jobs created very soon in the solar PV domain, in installation commissioning, in the rooftop, and in the utility scale, as well as in the manufacturing. So we see that you know, a lot of employment would be given to the candidates, the ITI diploma candidates, the engineering candidates. So the employment, uh, the, the renewable energy domain will will actually give a lot of jobs. Include in uh, in fact, one of the reports of MNRE also says that uh, the hydrogen mission, which was launched in 2023 January, says that green hydrogen sector, uh, after a production of five million metric tons by 2030, will give six lakh jobs to Indian youth. Uh, now, the main challenge is main challenge and opportunity that lies in front of us is one which I talked about, which is the gap between the candidate trained and the aspirations and the requirement of the industry, which can actually be bridged by the industry itself by giving a primary feedback to us that these are the challenges, these are the gaps, and these are the trainings that have to be uh, considered 
and the opportunity is of course it is the domestic employment that would increase the gdp of the country and that would give local employment to a lot of communities uh, in fact i would be very happy to share that our existing curriculums in solar uh, we have developed around 24 curriculums starting from the solar pv installation to design to manufacturing to operation and maintenance to entrepreneurship a lot of curriculums have been internationally uh, uh, kind of uh, appreciated and we have recently signed an MOU with the BSW Solar which is the German Solar Federation and they are willing after reviewing the curriculum and after meeting some of the candidates they are willing to take uh, 2000 solar technicians from India to Germany and give them an employment for two years so uh, it is not that the uh, th there's any dearth of the quality training but uh, in, in the last, it is ultimately the industry which has to take up these candidates and give them the employment. So a primary feedback from their side is very much important in redesigning the curriculums and upskilling the candidates. And as a primary feedback, that would, import, that would be important for the Skill Council for Green Jobs to actually cover this growth journey of the Indian manufacturing sector. Thank you. So when we talk about just transition, uh, ILO has given a beautiful def definition of just, just transition. So we have to, because India has uh, underseen, India has been seen a lot of growth journey in terms of industrialization. And that has been a very important phase for our country and still going to be till 2030. So with indus industrialization also comes pollution and carbon emissions. So in just transition, you know, it is beautifully defined that we have to grow, we have to grow as a nation, we have to also uh, grow as an industry, but with a sustainable way, with a green way, which is equitable and which is sustainable for all the communities, for all the workers and for all the stakeholders. We see that uh, there is a, we see a, a talk about phasing down and phasing out of coal. It would be a very, very good opportunity for these coal mining workers to get upskilled in the solar PV sector, in rooftop installations. A classic example is the Seva Group, Self-Employed Women's Association. Uh, in the run of Kutch, a lot of Seva Behene uh, who, are, uh, who have not uh, carried out any formal education, but they were able to grasp the technical skills of solar and they are doing a lot of installations in the Kutch region. SCGJ has designed a training curriculum training program for them and today we see that they are very successful in carrying out the installations in the, in the solar energy space. The same thing can happen for the coal mining workers also. Uh, because we have a good pool of master trainers, good pool of training institutions, training partners, some good engineering colleges, now even the industry is also coming forward in funding these training programs. We can certainly work ahead in getting these coal mining workers trained, upskilled and reskilled. So as per our own internal estimation, I haven't gone through the report which has been launched by NSFEI because they have launched the report today. So we would definitely take some time to review this report and of course match the figures with what we have internally done. But I see that at least there would be a surge of 5% of the employment in the next one year in the solar domestic manufacturing space. And not only, it is not just about the percentage, when we talk about the gender equity, when we talk about inclusion of women in the power sector, I also see that a lot of women would be getting jobs in the solar manufacturing space, which would be a huge opportunity for the country to showcase, um, you know, to at, at the global community.